Hello and welcome to this overview of one of the new features in Worldographer, also known as Hexographer 2. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program. And this new feature that we're talking about is a better way or additional ways to configure um, new terrain textures and features into the program. What we had when we launched version 1.0 was a way to drop the um, icons into a known folder and then it would go to that folder kind of parse the file name where you can include the uh, size of the icon relative to a hexagon size as well as color code information for background color if it's terrain for example and elevation as well if it was terrain. I'll include a link that goes over those details where it's it's on our worldographer.com website under the instructions tab but I'll, I'll give a direct link to it in the comments here. Um, so this new feature uh, goes over the is is part of this new configuration uh, menu bar item, and you've got uh, configure here. We've got load and save configuration. Those were in the program before under file, where you could kind of set up a map with all the icons and um, the line settings, um, shape settings, the uh, label settings and then save it and then load it again when you start a new map um, to, to kind of have all that worked out so you don't have to start it over from scratch. Um, also in the prior, pro prior version of the program was the show configuration folder. I think it was on the tools menu. Um, and here you can see uh, where that folder is that's supposed, to, that's supposed to go to to automatically recognize icons for the terrain textures and features. Um, as I said, though, for some users, you know, I've got it working fine for me on multiple machines here that I test with. But some people, I don't know if it was a permissions issue or, or something else, um, it wasn't working for them. So um, this tells you what that folder is. And we can change it now, though, with this change configuration folder, which just goes to your documents, essentially, your home directory, your user directory and you can pick any folder you want and set it to that and then it's going to look inside of that folder for once you restart so once you've done this you need to restart the program and then it will look inside of there and it will look for terrain features and textures subfolders and try to parse those as before and again you've got to file follow the file naming convention which is discussed on that um, link that i'll post so that's um, one bit of new functionality. In addition to that though, we've got this add custom terrain features and textures um, options, which lets you go to your, your computer and um, browse and find files. So this is good if you don't wanna drop them all in one place. If you wanna have, um, if you need to have files in different places and you don't wanna tinker with, with where they are located on your computer, you can come here and it's just gonna go and look for different um, different files that you select and you can just go ahead and, and pick anything on here that you'd like um, so you can also right click to I'm sorry not right click but control click and shift click so you want to select several things you can do so um, and I'm just randomly picking some things that I hope aren't too big so I've gone and picked four items and added it to the terrain drawer um, so what we can do here now is create a new folder, um, a new map rather, and we'll see it on the terrain drawer. Okay. So then if I expand that out a little bit, and there they are. So we've got the, the swords here and, and the COA test and probably a couple of others are, are yeah, so we've got a couple of others mixed in there. Um, the default background color is supposed to be uh, uh, gray. So you see that here on the swords. This other image, you know, uses the full, uh, has a black background kind of built in. There's not really any transparency to it. Um, that's why we prefer PNG images because the transparency is better. Uh, GIFs do support transparency, but it, it's going to still kind of look like a jagged transparency for some technical reasons. And you can, you either know that or you can look it up if you're curious. Um, now we can also go to configure terrain features and textures. Uh, the configure terrain, for example, there's there there are actually gear box or rather gear icons that allow you to configure. Um, so, but you can get to the same place by going to configure terrain. It's just kind of giving you two two ways to get to it. So you can go whatever go to whichever way is easier. Um, here, 
this dialogue in the case of terrain there's so much terrain built in the system of different styles that we wanted to ask you hey which type are you trying to filter uh, most stuff is going to go into the classic uh, unless you put cosmic in the file name or if you put iso calls or iso rows in the file name it'll go to the other groupings um, but since we didn't do that since our file names didn't have that if we go here hit continue it takes a moment to kind of populate that list and down here at the bottom are a couple of our new ones that we've added um, it's basically alphabetical but it does capitals first at the moment um, and if we want to change the background color here we can say we want a dark red we can change the size if we want to elevation is 1000 it's feet above sea level but you can change it to, to whatever you want whatever is appropriate for the terrain that you happen to be adding again you know you're not going to use uh, a couple of swords as terrain i'm just kind of picking some random graphics uh, to show how this functionality works so i can say save and then you can see that it's revised the background color there we can drop it in here um, and then the same thing for features and, sh and uh, shapes if you wanted textures you would see on the shapes tab here and textures if we added some new textures you'd see them appearing in the two texture uh, options here so but back to terrain one other feature while i'm here that i want to show off is uh, you know you still you get a lot of terrain in the tool even if you filter for say all classic and you're because we've got a classic map style here where it's not the isometric icon set um so you've got you know probably upwards of 100 different graphics. So what you've added is this notion of favorites. And so you can kind of pull up your favorites. Now, initially, your favorites are going to be empty. So you wouldn't want to go there um, until you've added some. How do you add some? You right click and you say add to favorites. If something is already in your favorites, it's going to have a right click option of remove from favorites. So now if I remove that one, well, we should see dead forest is there, but desert cactus is not. So if I go to favorites, you can see now we've got that. So that's one other little feature that we wanted to do because I know um, myself when I'm using the tool, you've got, like I said, upwards of 100 and typically you'll use, you know, 20 or 30 at a time. So I wanted to add that functionality into the tool and you can still filter as well. So if we wanted to just look for forest, um, hit enter. And so now in our favorites, these are our forest. If we go back to all terrain forest, then you're going to see all things. And again, like I said, you've got the other styles as well. If you do all terrain, if you switch to classic, you'll see just the classic ones that are forest. But even then, you've got quite a few different types. So that covers this functionality of Worldographer Hexographer 2. I hope you like it. If you run across some bugs, drop me a note at support at inkwellideas.com or if you're not quite sure how to, how to work it. Let me know. That'll give me some more ideas for additional videos to do. I think these are really helpful. They're getting a lot of good reviews. So uh, thank you for your support.